Today's video is a little bit of an emotional drunk dial. Yes, I am drunk dialing my dead dad. And as a result, this video may be a little depressing, but it also might relate to you. What is it about feeling unloved and possibly unlovable? Why is it that even those of us who had good relationships with our parents may end up with daddy issues later in life? See, I had a great dad. I had a wonderful father who protected us. What the hell is that? I had a father who worked very hard to protect us from bad things in the world and to educate us. And that's awesome. That's a blessing. But we'll start with the fact that my dad died almost four years ago. I have spent the last four years and several years before that, wondering if my dad loves me. Now for any family members who may ever watch this video, I don't want you to answer these questions for him. I don't want you to tell me that my dad loved me. I don't want you to tell me why he became distant from me and why he backed out of my life. Because you can't and I need you to understand that. I need you to understand that I get that you love me and that you want to convince me that it all is okay, but you can't. This is something that I am still having to figure out between my daddy, my father, and me. And no one else can fix that. See, I have a little bit of a case of prodigal daughter syndrome. I am the youngest, by far, of my sisters. <laughs> And they were coming of age and becoming adults when I was still a child. So I was at home and my sisters may have had a little flare of rebellion in their lives. They may have had true free spirits and gone out to conquer the world, which frankly is in true fashion of my father. So they were right a chip off of that block. Consequently, I was the child at home who watched my father cry and watched my father afraid because my sisters worried him just a bit. And it's not because they did anything wrong. It's just they were out in the world. And my dad was afraid because he knew that the world can be a rough place. And any time I did anything slightly rebellious, any time that I expressed myself in a non-traditional way that a little girl would, I was informed that I was being just like my sisters and I would see him break into tears and leave the room. And I would be told that I was never allowed to, to express myself that way again because it caused him fear. And that I was just too young to understand why he was so afraid. So I learned young to be a people pleaser. I wanted my dad happy. I was seeing how he was and I was seeing how emotionally distraught he was. And I learned that I needed to ask permission and that I needed to be polite and that I needed to do things within other people's comfort zones so that I wasn't the cause of those fears, so that I wasn't the cause of that crying. And I built my identity on being that daughter, on being there, and on trying very hard not to rebel, and on trying very hard to give him reasons to be proud and to smile and to feel good. about me and, and my future and the things that he had wanted for his daughters. As a teenager, I became very close to my dad. I felt like we had a really honest, communicative relationship and I felt like we had kind of grown up together. I felt like we were unbreakable. And when I left for college, there were times that he and I would get on the phone with each other and we would sit on the phone for hours in silence, just watching TV together. And at first it was awkward, but then it became normal because 
It's like we could just sit together. We didn't have to talk. We could just be together, even across the state. And then sometimes we would call each other and we actually would talk for hours. <laughs> I felt things take a different turn right about the time I was 30. He stopped talking to me about anything real. He stopped talking with me about himself or about me. It was all work and news and facts, cold. And over the next few years, I felt that growing. When I called him to tell him that I was, when I called him to tell him that I was infertile, he reacted with tender love. But he never talked about it again. And if I did, he was just silent. And then when I would pause for long enough, he would start talking about Rush Limbaugh. And then he died. And then he died. Now the circumstances around his death are particularly awful and, and they really pull into question <laughs> all of my anxieties and fears. I loved him just as much when he died, but we hadn't been close in so long. And that hurt me before he died, that hurt me. And then when he died, I knew there was no fixing it. <laughs> He was gone. There was no way for me to call him. There was no hope that he would call me. And I think every day since then I have questioned if he ever loved me. I know he loved me because I was a child. I know he loved me because I was his child. I know he loved me and wanted to protect me from all the things he had gone through in his life, from all the things he knew were in the world that could harm me. My dad loved, <laughs> he loved, he loved people. He loved strangers and he loved dogs and he loved cats. And sometimes I feel like he was too empathetic and his heart was too sensitive for this world. It's like he was never meant to be here. <laughs> but I still question every day if he loved me for who I am. And this victimizes me over and over and over again by constantly wondering why I wasn't enough, how I could have been enough, and just trying to accept that if he didn't love me for me, I'm me, what can I do? Those thoughts keep me trapped in feeling like I'm not enough. I tell you all of this because I feel like it's important to the journey of finding yourself. It's scary, it's scary as hell to try to step out and be yourself without being concerned over if people will stop loving you for being yourself. Growing up, I did not really wear makeup. I never wore perfume because my dad wasn't into women who wore makeup and did not want his daughters getting all done up like that and because he had strong reactions to the smell of perfume. Well, that's fine. I mean, he wasn't a bad man just because he wasn't into makeup. But even as a little girl, I kind of had a love affair with makeup. I looked at the magazine photos and I looked at my mom's lipstick and her nail polish and I remember being in first grade and going with my best friend Jessica to Woolworths, my mom taking us there and mom getting us 
our choice each of a $1 lipstick and a $1 eyeshadow. And I chose blue eyeshadow and a bright lavender lipstick. <laughs> and I remember Jessica chose red, a bright red lipstick and blue eyeshadow. <laughs> but then I met the love of my life and I married him. And it turns out he also doesn't really dig the makeup look. He is not into the glam life. He is very much into the natural life and he is into woods and wonderfully crazy wild free hair and low maintenance. And nothing about all of this is low maintenance. So I kept not wearing makeup and I kept not trying stuff out. And I kept kind of eyeing through the glass, through the window, eyeing all the things that I had always been curious about and interested in. But back to my dad. I've spent a lot of years questioning, and especially since he's died, I feel like I can't see any evidence that he loved me for who I am. I loved him because he was a rad guy. He was bold and interesting and a storyteller and a joke teller and somebody with a huge compassionate heart and he had kind of a past and had grown up into this immensely loving father and man and husband and this person who could look back and see his mistakes and own up to a lot of them and he's a really good person. And instead, I spent the last eight years, and definitely the last four, looking at myself and thinking, how could he ever love me for me? How could he ever love me for who I am instead of just because I'm his daughter? I don't know if he would have been a people pleaser. I don't know how he could respect somebody who felt like she needed to ask him permission to go to a Tim McGraw concert when she was 19. <laughs> Why wouldn't he have more respect and love for the daughters who chose to pursue life on their terms, who marched to their own drummers, who did what they felt was right? How am I not just a giant letdown? The last 10 or 15 years of his life, I heard him say repeatedly that the daughter he knew had scared him the most when she was growing up is the daughter he worried least about now because he knew she was happy. And I feel like that asshole son standing in front of her dad saying, are you kidding me? I've been here this whole time for you to do this on your terms. Don't I get any credit for that? <laughs> I feel like I gave up some of my adventure and some of my choices to make someone else who I loved happy. I'm not trying to whine, though I know it sounds like that. I'm pretty good at whining. But you know, I was just sitting at the computer looking for a photograph of me and I ran across Photos of my dad walking me down the aisle. And it just brought it all back again. Like every day seems to have something that brings it back. It makes me wonder why when he walked my sister down the aisle, he gave her marital advice. And when he walked me down the aisle, he was telling me about someone's gallstones. And he was close with me. We were close when I was a teen. And now I look at it and wonder if my sisters had been around Would he and I have had a close relationship at all? Whether it's daddy issues of your own, whether it's an abusive mom, whether it's never having had a good romantic relationship, whether it's an uncle that sexually abused you, we all have those relationships in our life that make us feel questions about ourselves, make us wonder if we're worthy, if we are worthy of love, if if we can be loved for who we are. And honest to God, that's a huge part of why I'm on this journey that I'm on right now, where in the last 
13 months I have been wearing lipstick and trying makeup and deciding that I have to lose weight and trying to figure out how to become an artist again, how to unearth the artist in myself. I don't want to listen to what other people want for me or especially what people want of me. I want to figure out what I want of myself and what I want for myself. And I am blessed to be doing this within the framework of marriage and a husband who, while he may not understand at all why I like the things I do, that he is being very supportive in me exploring things. And when he doesn't understand something, he gives me space to explore these things instead of pressuring me not to be those things just because he doesn't understand it or doesn't want it. And I think he's watched me struggle for long enough myself with my desire to please my dad, my sister, previous boyfriends, my husband. I just don't want to be afraid to be myself. And I want to know that so long as I am 100% whoever I am, that the people who love me, love me for that and not because I'm trying to be something for them. I have recently figured out and realized I will probably question every day for all of my life whether my daddy loved me. I don't know how to escape that. I just don't, I don't know how to. But I can't let that continue to define how I feel about myself. I can't let that continue to define how I feel about my days. And I've realized I can't let whether or not I'm a mom continue to define how I feel about myself. Because I really have always dreamt of being a mommy. And it's been a lot of years and I don't, I don't have that dream come true. And I've watched my dream come true for so many other people that honestly, more days than not now, I start to lose hope that I'll ever have that dream come true. <laughs> and I don't know how the next 38 years of my life will look or feel, but who wants to live their next 38 years with those questions being what defines your day and your soul? Questions like that interfere with your joy, with your ability to be present, with your marriage. If you're blessed to have children, those questions interfere your interactions with them. I can't say I'm exactly happy in my life right now, but I'm trying to get there. But I'm better now than I have been for the last seven years. But I do know that even being not exactly happy right now in life, I am pursuing that. I am trying to squeeze that out of my life. And when I feel happy, I am trying to grab it with everything I've got because I do want to live another 38 plus years. I do want to live a long, healthy life and I want to feel good about it. And frankly, I'm glad right now that I can't define my worth by being a mom. And it just clicked to me this week. I honestly think that that's part of why God has me facing infertility. Because I would have wrapped up my entire purpose and life definition in being a mommy. And I can't do that. Even if I get to have children, even if someone blesses us and chooses us for adoption, I am not just a mom. I'm me. And whether or not my dad could love me for who I am, I want to love me for who I am. And if you're struggling with any of this, I want you to love you for who you are. Because honestly, unless you're a really shitty person, I already love you for who you are. And if you think you're a really shitty person, you probably actually aren't. Because people have passed. And people make bad choices and people make mistakes. And part of that is letting thoughts like this interfere with our ability to have friendships now and to have relationships now and to love ourselves now. Anyhow, emotional drunk dials. Almost every single day, I emotionally drunk dial my dad. 
and almost every single day I cry and almost beg him to tell me that he loved me. Even though even if he did, even if I had the ability to ask him, what an unfair, crappy question to ask someone. Do you love me for who I am? That's a no-win situation. I could never ask him that, even if he were still alive. I would have to assume that however he feels about me, that I'm still okay as who I am. And that whether or not he loves me for who I am, I'm still worthy of love. Just like he is. And just like you are. Anyhow, I hope that this story helps shed some light on the journey. And maybe helps shed some light on your journey too. And if you relate, I'm sorry. God loves you. I'll see you in another video.